the Smithsonian was uh, was one, was just marvelous uh, in in many ways, and it taught me quite a quite a few fundamental lessons. And I had to go there with a project, and the project that I took was to analyze um, some amazing rocks that we'd found at a kimberlite pipe in Lesotho called Matsoku, and it was actually a um, locality that Keith Cox found when he was doing his his basalt work. And a guy who became a lifelong friend of mine, Ben Hart, uh, who um, spent most of his career in Edinburgh, um, he, uh, he came on that trip. And we had collected the most amazing set of rocks. And, and I wanted to get busy with them on the probe, find out the mineral compositions and do T's and P's and FO2's and all that sort of stuff. My official supervisor at the Smithsonian was Brian Mason, uh, of the book fact, you know, those fundamental books that everybody mm -hmm. got dished out in the 60s and the 70s, uh, from New Zealand, I mean, originally. Uh, and, um, and, but, and, but Brian was quite old at that stage. I, I forget how old he was, but I think he was 80 already. He was certainly of that sort of age. Still came to work every Still day. Still work. Yeah. And there was a, a slightly younger guy, well, I guess 20 years younger guy, um, George Switzer who uh, was a mineralogist. He, he had found uh, several new minerals in his career. But he, was, he and I got on like a house on fire. We really understood each other well. And he made me sit down every, every Friday, he'd get a beer out and some, some bagels or something like that, and we'd talk through what, we, what I was doing. And uh, while I was at the Smithsonian, uh, the geophysical lab, which is uh, out towards the Beltway in Washington, uh, where Joe Boyd has made himself famous, and uh, there was a guy, Henry Mayer, who also was a famous name in diamonds, was analyzing inclusions in diamonds. And he came up with some extraordinary compositions. And they had a press release about it. And I read the press release, and then I went to see Joe, and, and um, Henry had, had gone to Purdue by that stay and was going backwards and forwards, but I went to see them and I saw what they had. I came back to tell Switzer about it and, it, and amongst these things were very strange garnet compositions and chromite compositions and were quite distinctive, quite different from anything else. So we had the simple idea, let's, um, uh, let's take a look and see if we can find any of these garnets in concentrates. And uh, of xenocrysts from Kimberlites and Smithsonian had drawers full of that. So we, George and I went to the drawers and we pulled them open and uh, eventually we pulled out stuff from the Finch mine and we could see there was every color of garnet there, you know, from from straw colored to almost almost colorless to so purple they nearly looked black. You know, so we sorted them color wise and I went away and analyzed them and. Yeah. yeah, we found we found these things that, that same the same features that had that had um, uh, pitched up in the minerals in the diamonds. So that was good, you know. We we got quite excited about that, and um, and then I tried. I'd I'd done some prospecting on a place where they were recovering of some diamonds uh, from South Africa, and I tried that, and it didn't have any of these compositions in it. So the second bit of information we got wasn't that hot. So, um, uh, George Switzer was interested enough to go to a couple of locations in, uh, in the U.S. that were off Craton, around about Four Corners, uh, there's a place called Garnet Ridge, and um, a couple of other nearby diatremes that he, he could, they had concentrates. And he found that in those places where there were no diamonds, there were also none of these indicator minerals. And... Um, so now we were a bit stuck. Um, my year in the Smithsonian included quite a lot of other things, but to keep the thread of this story, um, when I got back to South Africa, I found out that the place that I thought had been yielding diamonds had been salted. Uh, it, it, that, that one of the directors, the diamonds only appeared after one of the directors had a appeared on the property and thrown, clearly thrown stuff in the pit. 
and, and a subsequent bulk sample had not recovered any diamonds from Pitts when he wasn't involved and had only recovered one or two diamonds from the old, old tailings. You know. So there was basically nothing there and there, was no, there were no micro diamonds there. So all of a sudden, you know, things were looking a bit more exciting. And I wanted to follow these things up. 